Well, over the last uh, 45 shows, we've done a lot of talking about insulin levels, diabetes, our pancreas, of course, which creates uh, insulin. Uh, but what we haven't yet touched on, and I can't believe it's taken us this long, is our liver. Uh, because we believe that over half adults in the UK have uh, fatty liver disease, or certainly non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, and yet we've not really touched on it. So I've pulled together two leading experts today. Uh, Hannah Richards, we're going to go to uh, first, uh, and then we're going to uh, speak to Primal Living's very own uh, Poppy, who's a nutritional therapist. We're going to talk about the liver. How do we look after it? How do we love our liver? How do we detoxify it if we've been going over the top a little bit during lockdown? So if you anything you need to know about the liver, get your questions in. I've got a whole load of questions too, because I admit it's not an area I've done lots and lots of research on. So uh, I think it's going to be a real learning hour for sure. If you are watching for the first time, we've got sort of three purposes uh, with this show. First one is to help us all uh, live healthy and happy and put more life uh, into our years, get the best out uh, uh, of our life. Uh, secondly, we're here to raise money uh, for the food banks across the UK uh, because now more than ever, uh, more and more families are relying on their support. And we're here to raise money via text donations, which is over here, or you can go to Just Giving, which is over here, and uh, make a donation. Right now, more than ever, and we're in our last week uh, of the food bank shows, so uh, if you've already made a donation, fantastic. Uh, if you haven't and you've been enjoying the shows and learnt lots, maybe you could uh, make that donation today uh, via either of those methods. Uh, and hopefully, and I know many of you have been, uh, do keep dropping off the food into the collection points uh, within your local supermarket because the food that you drop off then goes to your local community uh, and supports families uh, within your own uh, area. Uh, today's food fact, uh, uh, well I wasn't sure what to do this morning and then I received an email overnight from one of the uh, our brilliant uh, listeners, watchers, uh, uh, marvellous, and she said you haven't touched on radish yet. So I was there and thought, yeah, you could put. Uh, I did write about it in one of my books. Uh, horseradish uh, in particular then is going to be uh, today's uh, food fact. Horseradish, you probably wouldn't want lots and lots and lots of it, uh, but it, you can make your own uh, uh, sort of uh, horseradish uh, sauce. Very, very easy to do. It's a great accompany uh, to many meals and it is jam packed full of vitamins and minerals. So horseradish is something that, while well, you wouldn't want it probably as part of the meal itself, but as an accompaniment, wow, what a way to go. Uh, and one of the things it apparently does, and we'll talk to our experts in a moment, does help the liver to detox. So very, very topical indeed. Now, um, last time we spoke to uh, Hannah Richards, she had a little cat on the shelf all the way through. I wonder if a little cat uh, is around today, but we'll find out. Hannah, good morning to you. Morning, how are you? No cat this morning. Oh, I can see her. She's looking at me. Oh, um, good. She's probably wondering whether she's going to make it across the kitchen and <laughs> sit on the back of the chair, but I'm sure she'll pay us a visit. <laughs> Johnny, good. Now, um, uh, let's talk about the liver today. And uh, for those that uh, missed the show with you on the first time round, just give us a little bit of a, a background into yourself as well. Sure. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a registered nutritionist. I've always had sort of quite strong interest in the gut and sort of specifically what goes on in the gut. So the environment that we create, whether that's from our lifestyle, um, the food we eat, the relationships we keep, and also this sort of huge host of bacteria that are some good, some bad, some indifferent. And it, it's all about the environment there. So that really interests me. Um, and so I started getting into gut health, um, looking at parasitology, looking into functional testing. And sort of, I always say in, or describe the gut as this long windy road that starts at the mouth and ends at the anus. And there are lots of different um, conditions both mental, emotional and gastro that we see in this windy road. And it's really just about trying to figure out where the etiology of it all started and trying to- Sorry, what was that word? What was that word? What was that word? Etiology. Etiology, like the, um, the start, the, where, where, did it, where did it all start? Um, lots of people don't go back to the start. 
they sort of patch up along the way and but then the same problems keep occurring so it's really important to find the root of the, the cause you know the root cause um so that's what i um love doing the gastro gastro health is is a big part of my work um but the best friend of the digestive system is the liver and without the liver um the digestive system isn't efficient and without the digestive system running efficiently um like a good dance the liver isn't efficient either so it's all this sort of you know holistic 360 degrees of looking at health um and and yeah that's what i that's what i love that's what i'm passionate about um and um and that's why i wrote the best possible you to give people a sort of 101 understanding of where their organs live and, and what what the hell they do <laughs> so what does the liver do i know it's well, got a, a whole like load of different tasks that it has to undertake but uh, give us a, an overview yeah. of the liver well i like to think of the liver as sort of in, in sometimes we refer to the liver as the grandfather of all organs um when i was writing about the liver i described him as sort of the captain of the army overseeing everything in the barracks making sure all the bodily processes of which there are over 500 happen effectively and efficiently and um so so that you can be you know so that the liver works and you can be the best person you can be um you know it's a glandular organ and it basically its job is to filter everything that you eat and drink into a uh, into energy its job is to take toxins that we eat and that we drink and turn them into non-toxic substances so from sort of a solid uh, to a liquid so that it can then be excreted out of the body in a very basic analogy um, most of the time um, people struggle with that which is why detoxification comes up quite a lot and the liver is also one of those organs that when it isn't working well, when it is sluggish, we see lots and lots of signs and symptoms of this unhappy liver. That might be from bad breath to back pain, to dark circles under the eyes, to addictions, to frustration and anger, um, overeating, eating, uh, drinking too much alcohol. And so the liver is basically, it's a bit like a hoover. Its job is to hoover everything up. I always say to my clients, what do you do when the hoover bag stops picking things up? Now, people who clean themselves answer the question very well, and those that have cleaners are a bit stumped by this. But well, you, em generally, you, em you empty the, even I know that one, you empty the bag. Well, you're a modern day man, Steve. <laughs> but exactly, so we empty the bag. But when the liver gets full, we ignore it. We continue creating addictive behavior. We continue drinking alcohol to cover up the real pain that we're experiencing. We continue overeating, over-exercising, and we don't read the signs and symptoms that the liver is telling us. And when the liver gets full, it gets angry. Luckily for us, the liver does regenerate. I mean, it can regenerate 70%, which is pretty fantastic which means that we've sort of we're a bit like a cat we've got nine lives the problem is is that if we don't listen to these signs and symptoms we will find that the, our best friend that was the liver turns out to be our worst enemy as repair it, it suddenly will become there will won't be an option so it's a really really important organ think of it like a bit of a filter filtering everything you eat into energy and then all the toxins into a, a better substance so it can be excreted via the um, hepatic, hepatic portal vein out into the digestive system. But j just to finish the, the answer, the detoxification and the liver isn't just about the liver. It's essential to have good gut health because the, the digestive system is a bit like a helter skelter. And you sit on the top of the helter skelter with all, all the rubbish that the liver's collected and you put it in your sack and you sit on your sack and down you go. But if there's a blockage at the top of that helter-skelter, the digestive system, 
then toxicity gets to stay in the body and you get this recirculation you get this recirculation of toxicity and doing a green juice cleanse isn't going to help it's certainly going to make you feel a bit better but it's just a bit more it's a bit more than that so i so, you know there's lots of elements to it there's lots of naysayers out there when, when i wrote about uh, how to uh, tips on detoxing in my first book uh, lots of naysayers say, oh, there's no such thing as a detox you can't detox in a couple of weeks um and yet my belief is well a not only can you do it you should do it and should do it on a regular basis because just like you said you've got to you've got to empty that hoover bag absolutely you have you know i you know most a lot of people certainly in lockdown it's quite prevalent in lockdown isn't it at the moment people are probably drinking more alcohol than they've ever drunk before or not drinking i think we're either one side or the other yeah um, i've got I've, I've gone too far the one way yeah which uh well, i won't ask you which way that is well no that's why i've asked you to come on the show this morning because then I'll, I'll take note of it and uh i won't have so many glasses of wine this evening but you know look we've got all these enzymes in our body our body is designed to heal we've got cyp450 which these the, which is the enzyme that essentially breaks down of alcohol if you sort of like anything in the body annoy things then things have a, enzymes have a habit of running low um hormones have a habit of running low if you keep if you keep uh poking the body in the wrong way if you keep giving the body alcohol it will run out of resources it will keep inflammation high um and so if you're constantly drinking alcohol and giving your body no rest then these enzymes can start running out um or running thin or running dry and that's when we become less tolerant of alcohol we become less tolerant of caffeine as well mm -hmm. so doing um doing a green juice putting all the the foods which i'll go through which are good for the liver are not only essential but you know lots of people do poo poo detoxification i don't really know why mm -hmm. anything that you're doing good for the body is a good thing to do so yes, our green foods are really good for the liver. Of course, it gets a bit more complicated to whether we're absorbing them and whether we've got enough magnesium and B6 for conversions. But most people don't want to really know that. And most people aren't going to do uh, a methylation test or a m metabolite test to find out exactly where what they're lacking in. They want to, the key is, is to getting the whole body, mind, body and soul in a place of balance where these addictive behaviours, where these overdoing of things become in a place where people are sort of calm and happy. Sure, you can go and test the, the life out of your body and your bank account, but really it's about, it's a bit more simple than that. If you don't wake up in the morning and you want a pot of coffee, if you don't get to past lunchtime and you want a vat of red wine, if you don't react and fly off the handle then most of your life's probably in 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 in, in a form of balance and that's important to understand mm -hmm. you don't have to be doing complicated things to detox okay cool um, so what so let's let's go back to 101 so we know what the liver is it's it's this big uh filter to uh to do several things it filters out uh or tries to filter out uh, anything that's slightly poisonous um, it's there to convert uh, 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 certainly fructose uh, into into fats and so on. Um, uh, so it's got a very important job to do. Uh, what happens when it goes wrong? What exactly is liver disease? Well, what what happens when things go wrong is you know some of the signs and symptoms that you will see, as I just sort of explained, on a very you know uh, symptom symptom symptomatic level, you'll see. You know, the bad breath, um, dark circles. You might start to see a yellowing of the skin, jaundice, where bile doesn't get to get to the places it needs to get, where things get blocked in the body. Um, these over-addictive behaviours, all these that start, things will start to happen. Um, in fact, you know, interest what you said a moment. In interest what you said a moment ago. On Jack's 18th birthday party, we had a we had a big party for his 18th. And uh, I did have way too much to drink that night. And I did wake up with a bad bat the next morning and I actually thought I'd just lay funny. And somebody said, no, that's your liver saying you had too much alcohol. Is that, is that correct? Well, absolutely. 
yeah, it's absolutely correct. You know, that's why we have a peripheral nervous system. And this system is sort of this vast communication of um, it, communication between the brain and the spinal cord. Um, and the nerves, every, every part of the vertebrae has nerves that go out and feed different organs. And the nerves that feed the liver are known as T5 to T8. And they feed, you know, they feed the right shoulder. So when people come to me and they've been seeing a physio or an osteopath who's done a brilliant job, but just not getting any, you know, advancement in their pain threshold, then that's the time to look at the organ system, the visceral system, because you because the nerves feed communicate. Um, Burrell was a great osteopath who started to teach. He teaches and um, opened up the whole world of the peripheral nervous system and the viscerosomatic um, systems in the body, which mean that everything is connected. So when your knee hurts, you need to start looking at your adrenals and your sort of first chakra. When your right shoulder hurts, it's your liver, mm. um, you know, and so on and so forth. So that's absolutely right that you overload the liver and it will give you a sort of, you know, it'll knock you at some part of the body. If you know where nerves feed, a good practitioner will know where nerves feed, they can help you. Okay, so, so, so and we talk about liver disease quite a lot and uh, uh, non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease seems to be very prevalent in the UK at the moment and sort of the modern world. Is that just us getting our diet wrong or is it that the liver just can't cope with the amount of uh, processing of sugars and carbs that it has to do? Yeah, absolutely. I think that people associate more than anything um, liver and alcohol, don't they? And in fact, in the United States and a lot of South American countries, the, re the statistics on children as young as seven having non alcoholic fatty liver disease is really really sky high i mean it's worrying how many children have um nafl more than more than a, 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 any other um demographic almost um and it's happening in one in five adults it's happening more and more absolutely because our food isn't what it used to be because we're eating food that you know, it's sort of back to that motorway analogy. And if there's loads of traffic in the blood, in the cardiovascular system, in our arteries, then we're going to have a buildup. And bad processed food, not only does it not give us any nutrients, it becomes harder to break down. It becomes harder to filter. It becomes, it just creates a, a narrowing of those arteries. And, you know, the blood system and the liver are, you know, one of the same things. So that's where it sort of starts from. And plus, these foods are very highly addictive. These sugars are very, very highly addictive. I'm not anti-sugar at all, but when a huge population are eating out of food shops like Cottage Chicken and uh, frozen food companies and food is cheap, is, as long as food continues to be cheap, we will continue to have diseases like liver disease in children, and yeah. it's a bit of a tragedy. And, and just so I, I get the message across correctly, so... Uh, when we eat sugar, so let's take table sugar, which is half fructose um, and half glucose. Uh, the liver processes the glucose, uh, but then it pumps it out, insulin grabs it and, and gets it out of the bloodstream, stores it as body fat. But you never have a fructose blood monitor because there is no fructose allowed to circulate in the blood. So my understanding is the liver performs a task, uh, 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 lipogenesis, it turns the fructose part of sugar uh, into fat inside the liver and then obviously tries to get it out of the liver. But fatty liver disease, when it's non-alcoholic related, is that just overburden of fructose being turned into saturated fat uh, and not being able to pump it out fast enough. Is that kind of a, a correct um, analogy? Yeah, it, it's basically where the liver cells you, you, you are the liver cells have more fat um, to deal, to, it, it, the, the liver cells have more fat than they can handle. And that's what essentially creates the inflammation in the liver. So it's sort of, you know, it's like a bloat, it becomes a bloat or bloated and a bloated liver. Um, absolutely. 
Uh, and that's essentially down to bad, bad hydrogenated trans fat. Um, I mean, fat is good. We need fat in the diet, but they need to be, you know, good fats, good saturated fats and not these man-made fats that is causing the liver disease, um, which are found in highly, highly processed takeaway food and highly processed cheap food as well. Um, and meat, you know, badly processed meat is a big cause of it as well. So it's, it's fructose, it's the sort of bad oils, the sort of man-made oils, the hydrogenated and some of those seed oils. Uh, and that's how you get non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, and when, but then alcoholic fatty liver disease, is that because well, if you drink too much, uh, the body, the, the, the liver has to cope with the alcohol because alcohol, I guess, is poison in the bloodstream. Um, and therefore you're over filtering and it turns to fat inside the liver or is that slightly wrong? No, yeah, I mean, they're two very, very, very similar processes. One is created by the alcohol. I mean, they're both basically created by turning, uh, whether it's bad food or bad al uh, drink alcohol, into um, creating inflammation. And the filtration systems, your carbohydrate metabolism, your fat metabolism um, gets overburdened and overloaded. The enzymes CYP450 starts depleting um, and you get tissue damage. And the more and more damage you get, the more of the liver starts to have to essentially then regenerate. So it does come down to, it basically comes down to exactly what you say, where you put in a bad substance into the body. And when you put in a fat, something fat soluble, then the, body, the liver has to turn it into a liquid. So the problem is with, with uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is that if the liver is weak, if the liver is not performing as it should do, it's enabled to turn the, the, the solid into a liquid by process of detoxification and methylation. And then you have some people who don't have these methyl groups. And the methyl groups are the ones that help the conversions and the reactions, the chemical reactions happen. You would have no idea that you didn't have that in the body unless you tested. Um, but but when you are when you have a sort of, a, a, if that's a polymorphism, for example, then you're less able to process bad stuff, alcohol. Some people, as you know, are really good. They're alcoholic. They're called alcoholics. They're like the best in the world at processing alcohol. They, you know, they, they've, got, they've got the best livers going because they drink it all the time and they still keep going. Obviously, they're going to get to a point where they don't. But it's all about what you're made with in your genetics. And when you burn out certain enzymes, you know, then it's down to your epigenetics and start looking at your lifestyle and having to make those changes there. But that's not what a lot of people do. But the point mm -hmm. is, is that if you take a bad food that is alien to your body, which is most of this processed refined uh, bad fat food, it's alien to the body. The liver almost has no idea what to do with it. It's like putting something in a microwave and then expecting your body to digest it. You're like, your body's like, what the, what the hell is this? Yeah. You've just nuked all the goodness out of it and now you want me to break it down. You know, <laughs> it's sort of, it, it's taking something absolutely manufactured and putting it in an organic being and expecting an organic process to happen. So when you put fake food into a body and it burdens the liver, it, 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 it tanks it out. It just can't turn it into a liquid to be able to create the detoxification process to take it out of the body. Okay, got it. So right at the beginning, you mentioned that um, we can regenerate up to 70% of our liver if we've been giving it a bit of a hard time. Um, um, how does one start that detox? How long does it take for the liver to recover? Uh, let's say we come and get a lockdown at some point. We all, we've all been doing maybe eating things that we might not have normally eaten or drank a little bit more. How do we begin that detox? How long should it take? What should we be eating? And how long to get to a, a regeneration of around 70% of any of the damage we've done? Sure. I mean, I think it's probably um, wise to say that if your liver is in a place of regeneration, you know, you're, you're in some serious therapy. Um, for the majority of us, we're probably just doing a bit of what I call damage control. 
-hmm. And damage control is about um, if you put something in, you've got to put something, you've got to put something back in to re to undo the damage that has just been created. Um, so if you're feeling like, you know, if you're trying to reduce alcohol, if you're trying to eat better food, then there are certain supplements that are going to help with that. For example, milk thistle, um, known as Sliman, um, is um, a great liver, as is um, uh, turmeric, magnesium, uh, B6. B6 is the best for liver. Um, and... And then obviously all your foods, your cruciferous foods that are green. But it's not just about eating green foods for the liver because you have to have all the other vitamins and minerals there for detoxification to happen. It's like having the foundations to build a house. Um, so you have to have all these antioxidants. It's like you have to, um, you have, to have a, a huge array of, of everything um, that the body needs and amino acids are one of the, the biggest um, one of the reasons I'm so keen on bone broth is because it's full of cysteine and cysteine really um, helps do a regenerating job um, it helps the mu thin the mucus in the lungs it helps repair the gut lining um, and all these go towards liver detoxification um, is there any bone so broth uh, that you can recommend I mean you know we'll occasionally do it when we've got time on a Sunday but you know, the rest of the week. Is there an off-the-shelf bone broth that you'd recommend or have you really got to do it yourself? Like, I think do it yourself is the best. It's, sometimes it's a bit difficult at the beginning, but I think that um, um, Ossa is a good company or Borough Bone Broth, they both do two. Um, Dales could do one as well, and I know those shops are open at the moment, um, and Waitrose deliver, uh, Ocado delivers Dalesford. So that might be something to look at. Mm -hmm. um, Good, I've got both those written down. Lots of questions in this morning. Should we uh, go and say hello to everybody? Yeah, sure. Right, here we go. Let's get to the top of the list. Try not to miss anybody out. Uh, Marva says, good morning, Steve. My cooking uh, follows uh, your show. So I had a cucumber salad yesterday. We talked about cucumbers yesterday and Marva was the one that said, please tell us. Uh, a little bit about horseradish, which I did today. Uh, how is the liver working without the gallbladder, please? Uh, in the case where the gallbladder has been taken out, is it working double time? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I'm, you know, cholecystomies are one of the biggest perform. That's the removal of the gallbladder um, is one of the biggest performed surgeries that we see probably after cesareans or maybe they've topped cesareans now i don't know um the problem is is that you still obviously hold that metaphysical space of the gallbladder um so there are certain things that you will definitely need to take gall plus is a really good supplement from nutri that if you don't have a gallbladder you should definitely be taking um it's uh, it's about putting that en enabling that bile to still, um, you know, putting that bile back in, if you like. So if you're having problems with digestion, I definitely recommend that supplement. Um, you, you, if, if somebody takes an organ out, you do have to think about how that your body is then working without that very essential organ. So there are things you can do to compensate. Um, and Gold Plus is definitely one. Have a look at that supplement. That's great, great advice. Thank you. Joyce says, now I... Don't understand this word, so I'm going to break it down. I have genetic hemochromatosis. Uh, I wonder yeah. if you have any tips on how I can further protect my liver from the toxin ferritin. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of an iron overload. Um, it, it's sort of, you know, you've got to be very careful with your iron levels and know exactly how much iron is in is in everything so that that you know the overload doesn't happen it is quite a serious well it's not quite it's a serious condition to have um i probably need to know a bit more and have a look at medications um and i wouldn't certainly want to recommend any kind of supplementation over the, over a phone call like this um very happy to send you to send me an email just to sort of, you know, have a few, have a few more details. 
um but it, it, it's it's about regulating obviously those those iron levels and that can be quite um you know a, a serious matter uh joyce uh, there's a nice offer from hannah there uh, we've had hannah's uh, web uh, email address on the uh, on website on uh, throughout the show so get in touch uh, joyce is the answer there <coughs> Uh, Hema Patel, morning or Hannah, can you suggest a good tox and how often, please? A good detox and oh, what? how often. Oh, what? Sorry. Uh, question detox. was from uh, Hema. Can you suggest a good detox and how often, please? I, I would suggest that detoxification needs to be something you're doing every single day. And it is something your body's doing every, every single day. If you don't detox every single day, you would just sort of self-combust. So um, I guess the question is about what more can I be doing to look after myself and my metabolism? Because if the metabolism, if the metabolism isn't there, then, then detoxification is quite difficult. And that's about generating energy in the body. Um, I, I, I will say to my clients who are struggling a little bit, make sure you're doing three things every single day that puts you in a better place than you were in before. Whether that's making sure that you've always, you're drinking two litres of water, whether you do want to have a green juice, because a green juice with all the good vegetables in it is definitely going to be hitting the liver. It's definitely going to be making you feel brighter and calmer and all those things. And then it allows you to do other things in the body. Um, you could take these, you know, in my book, if you're drinking alcohol, then there's a whole plan and supplementation plan for the supplements you should be taking before you drink and after you drink sounds like i'm promoting alcohol here but um <laughs> it's damage control so you know the liver loves b6 it loves uh, milk thistle it loves uh turmeric it loves magnesium are you taking those supplements horseradish wonderful for the liver great that over all your food um and the, and essentially the liver sweats you know the body sweats we've got these seven channels of elimination and we need to make sure that this excretion is happening. So are you sweating every day? You know, so hopefully there's a few things there. No, that was absolutely brilliant. I've got a question. Uh, when I go on my sort of three, four, I've never got to five days, but let's uh, quite often we'll do a three day complete fast. Um, but take all my vitamins and minerals in the morning every day. In fact, I take all the ones you've mentioned. I have a multivit, turmeric, magnesium, probiotic. Okay. Uh, omega-3, that's my sort of um, uh, CQ10 every single day. Um, but when I go on a three-day fast, am I actually detoxing the liver or because it's then turning my body fat back into energy with no control of what's in that body fat, uh, is that actually not detoxing but the opposite? It, it, it's, a, it's a good question. It's a difficult question. I don't know what Poppy would say. Um... It, it, it would depend on a lot of things, you know, is your, if your digestive system is really good and your, your bowels are moving, then then that, that toxicity is being moved out. If you're sweating, then toxicity is being moved out. For sure, if you're constipated for three days, then that sort of rehepatic circulation, sort of toxic gut syndrome um, is definitely going to be happening. What, what happens in three days from one body to another body? Um, you'd have to be testing to really get a definition on that, I'm afraid. Okay, good advice. Thank you very, very much. Uh, my doctor recommended one glass of red wine as post-cancer food advice. <laughs> I, that, I, don't, I, God, I don't think we can comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, in, in the Longevity Solution uh, written by, who wrote the Longevity Solution? Don't know if I've got it here. Um, there was definitely um, some research to say one or two glasses of red wine uh, helped uh, in some of the areas where people were super centenarians, but there you go. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, Hannah, any advice for reversing uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Uh, yeah, so so the, the, so the, how you can reverse it, you know, it's like diabetes as well. You know, lots of things are completely reversible. So it's about getting, you know, all the things we've talked about back into back into play. You know, eating fruit and vegetables, um, sweating the body out, taking the supplementation, um, looking after the whole whole life. 
you know, lots of people try and complicate the body and think that there's a pill that they need to take for certain things or one thing they can do. It's the whole of it. You know, we need to be getting our, our relationships back into order. We need to start not eating food from processed manufacturers that can live on the shelves for 100 days. You know, if it can live on the shelf for 100 days, then what, what is it going to be doing in your body? Yeah. So I think um, there, are, there are lots of things you can do. Um, and really, the first one is about getting back to eating fresh vegetables and fresh fruit and good organic meat and lots of filtered water because that regenerates the cells. You know, the mitochondria get a good old workout and then everything starts working. It's sort of like all the elves in Santa's grotto. They all <laughs> wake up and they start doing all their little jobs again. Yeah. When you've got, you know, fatty liver disease, pretty sure most of those elves are all asleep. So you've got, it's about regenerating the body um, by, by moving it and eating it back to health. So I think the message I think I've taken from you loud and clear is that you've just got to think logical. It's like, what is the body designed to eat? It's not manufactured, highly processed foods. It's not uh, things with long shelf lives, with chemicals stuffed in it to give it the long shelf lives. It's, not, uh, it's actually not even vegetables that are covered in herbicides and pesticides because although they keep telling us they're safe, surely the liver's got to do more work to process that than it would the blueberry that's completely, or blackberry that's completely natural. So it's organic, natural food. Avoid the, the, the fake oils, but eat real fats, uh, eat real foods. Uh, drink, fil you know, filter your water to take out as much of the, the nasties uh, in the water. So it's just trying to give your liver a bit of a break, isn't it? And then, uh, and then if you want to do like you know, the, the, the green drinks, the organic vegetables, fantastic. Um, but just give your liver a little bit of a break. Uh, a couple more questions and then we'll get a, um, uh, a poppy on. Um, how often should your bowels move, said Kirsty. Now let's see if I can remember what you said last time. I think you said the number <laughs> of times isn't that important, but it's regular, you know, roughly the same time every day is what you're looking yeah. for. Did I remember that one correct? You know, you know, you can ask, it's about asking the right questions. You can ask somebody if they're regular, but what does regular mean? My regular is different to yours and your regular is different to Poppy. So um, if you ask somebody if they're regular, they'll say yes, but then you need to know what their regular is. So if it's, they say, oh yeah, every seven days. I've had clients that say, oh, regular is clockwork every Monday. You know, <laughs> that's a problem. That's yeah. creating toxicity. It yeah. needs to happen every single day. And if not, two to three times a day. I mean, this is optimal, optimal bowel health. If you're having a bowel movement twice a day, you're in a good demographic of people that's got a good digestive system. If you're doing anything less than that, then unfortunately there's some work to do because uh, bowels are one of the easiest signs of, of good health and there's something you can keep your eye on. Yeah. Um, and when they start getting consistent and regular, you're, you're going in the right direction. So Jack's mother, my wife, she's literally once or twice a week person. She's very slender. Where does she start? Because you know, uh, she'll say, well, I just, I'm, I'm just good. I can you know, hold it in or whatever. But well, well, what's, what's the first areas to start looking at? Is it nutrition? Is it exercise? I, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that she knows how to eat because she lives with you. And you know, uh, you know, most people do. Um, so I'd start looking at her metabolism more than anything because there's, there's obviously a deficiency from, uh, there's a sympatheticness, and you said she's very slim, so she very, she's very got, slim, but she's got an overactive thyroid, which is the opposite that normally makes you put on weight. Uh, but, there uh, we go. So thyroid and constipation. So I would start looking at her metabolism. I'd start checking body temperature first thing in the morning, and then having a look at body temperature. 45 minutes after you eat and by doing that you get a sense of where the stress response is and where the food's working for you it's all very well and good to eat all the best food but i have a hundred women who live on a bowl of porridge and then salmon and salad and they're hungry their whole lives and they can't lose any weight and that's because they're not putting enough fuel into their fire and if your metabolism is slow or low then you're not going to create the peristaltic movement 
and a good digestive system in which gives you the oomph to get things going. Gotcha. So everything's sort of in a standoff mode. Yeah. So it would start at metabolism. Brilliant, great advice. Uh, and final one before we get Poppy on, uh, any connection between liver function and high blood pressure? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's to do with the kidneys filtering. And, um, you know, if you've got high blood pressure, then there's a stress response going in the body. If that's an alcohol, if that's because of alcohol or bad food, too much food, smoking, then that's going to create a stress response, which creates a high blood pressure response as well. So, uh, I mean, it's a very basic answer to it. Obviously, it can get a bit more complicated depending on medications and the reason that the high blood pressure has gone there. But essentially, anything that causes your body to be in a stress response, which would mean that if there's something you can't get, if you can't lose weight, if you can't sleep, if you can't find satiety, if you can't stop your addiction, then that is a stress response in the body. And your body will then start responding accordingly with high blood pressure, with overweight, with insomnia, with bad skin. And then it comes back to having a look at how metabolism helps to decrease the stress response and how food can play a role in that. So that was a great response. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> you started off with like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be oversimplifying it, but it was a great, great response. Um, shall we chat? Uh, try a dialing Poppy as well. You okay to stay yeah. there for a second, Hannah? Sure. Hey, Poppy, how are you doing? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very, very good. For those that don't know, uh, Poppy is our resident uh, nutritional therapist at Primal Living. Uh, so she's bound to tell you you need loads of supplements because that's what she's paid to do. But she does believe in it 100%. So. Food first. <laughs> Always food first. It's about the vitamins and minerals from diet and and i always just like to sort of mention this and by the way first of all actually hannah so lovely to see you as well so interesting oh, yes, what you're thanks. saying thank you <laughs> uh, but diet is this word that's been it's been misconstrued over the years diet actually means lifestyle it means nutrient dense food uh vitamin rich nutri nutrient rich foods in which we put into our body and then supplements come into play if perhaps you know somebody wants an additional um, uh, something additional to go alongside a healthy lifestyle and, and you know that is bound by choice and it's very individual but first and foremost it's about what we you know what we're putting into our bodies in terms of ingestibles our, our food so uh yeah d diet the word it's uh there's some misconceptions around it these days it doesn't mean restrictive it, it doesn't mean you know not having this not having that it's actually more about what you do have you know the goodness that you do put into your body yeah we're all overfed and undernourished. Too many people eating too much food, but actually getting way nowhere near the amount of vitamins and minerals they need from that food because it's highly processed. Um, question for you both. Uh, you can both answer it one at a time or, or, or <laughs> throw it to each other. So one of go back to the alcohol one again. Uh, alcohol restricts the absorption of many vitamins. Um, uh, is that why you were saying, Hannah, you probably need your vitamins before a drink and after a drink? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, um, the, the, the supplements to be able to put in before alcohol for me are things to be able to help the body process and help those enzymes process alcohol. So glutathione, for example, is the body's master regulator. Uh, antioxidant and that is something that's then going to help offset the effects of alcohol going into the body it, it's the damage control theory if you yeah. if you load the body with a whole load of uh, poison which alcohol is um, then 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 you're going to have a hangover you're going to feel rotten you're going to uh, your body can't process it you know and, and and a lot of people then go and eat straight after a big night out and the body, there's, your body's still flooded, with your bloodstream still flooded with alcohol. You need to almost, I always recommend people to wait till the last unit of alcohol is out of their bloodstream before they even contemplate, contemplate eating again. Because you're asking the body to do loads of stuff and it's like, I just want to have a bit of a rest, thanks yeah. very much, because you Absolutely. kept me up for 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, and, and but, but the challenge, of course, is it not that um, the hormone glucagon 
that we send uh, to go and you know, let's say we've got low uh, blood, blood sugar levels, so we need some energy. So we can either get that from food coming in or we can you know, burn our own body fat. To burn your own body fat, the, hormone need, uh, the body needs to send a uh, hormone to go and get that called glucagon. But I believe, uh, certainly Zoe Harkham taught me that um, um, alcohol sort of stops glucagon from working. And one of the reasons we all go and have that kebab after a few drinks uh, isn't so much that we just weak willed, it's that um, you know, we've stopped being able to access our body fat. It's also one of the reasons when you know, if you're trying to lose weight, if you drink too much alcohol, you'll never lose weight just because you, know, you can't dip into your own fat stores. Can I just also to add to add to this as well, and absolutely everything that, that's been said is it's bang on. You know, the, the liver is, we can't forget it, it's a factory, isn't it? And obviously, Hannah, you, you yeah. know, you talk about this as well. It's a factory and a factory does multiple processes. You know, it, it is a processing house. It manufactures, it, it, it synthesizes, it, it creates, and uh, it also, it's a storehouse as well. It's almost like a pantry, so it, it keeps, you know, mm. vitamins, minerals, bits and bobs behind. Uh, but when you're talking about, when we're talking about alcohol and, and what we're putting into our bodies, our liver, the, the largest organ in the body, it, it, it's there as a filtration system. And it can only filter, as, as, you know, as Hannah's quite rightly pointed out, so much at one given time. You know, and, and it's different for everybody in terms of genetics and epigenetics, but, but, but there is a similarity to a degree of how much your liver can process at one given time. If you're having excessive alcohol, if you're drinking so much at, at one time, you know, into your body, the liver, it, it's trying to filter it. And then what it, what it can't filter, it'll go elsewhere. You know, um, toxic, toxic substances will then come out in, in blood and urine and, and sweat and, and you know, even the breath. So if you're overloading it, that, that's what it's about. You know, it, it's, it, it's too much for that organ to handle. It's very clever. It is amazing. It can regenerate itself. We couldn't live without it. But ultimately, we still have to look after it. We can't be giving it too much to do at one given time. And, you know, I loved what you said earlier as well, Hannah, about detoxification. You know, this should be something that we should be doing every day. You know, detoxes, mm -hmm. yes, are, are great in the respect of, Perhaps at one time you want to do more, but really we should be doing something for it every day. We shouldn't be abusing our liver, abusing our body and then go, right, I'm going to do a week of green juicing and, you know, not eating or whatever yeah. it is. It's, it's about yeah. looking after it regularly. That's great advice. It's, it's a bit like in the business world. I remember writing a business book once and I said, you know, one of the problems with meetings and one of the reasons I hate meetings is people just wait and wait and wait till the meeting on the Monday where why wait to the Monday? If you've got something to do, get it done. And it's kind of what you're saying is, look, yeah, now and again, go and have a full on detox, but don't wait for a full on detox. You should be thinking about this big organ all the time and where you can avoid those toxins, whether it be the alcohol, whether it be the packaged food, whether it be uh, the fake oils and the seed oils, whether it be uh, yeah, the fertilizers, the pesticides, the herbicides, think of your liver all the time Try and put less, you know, try and put less load onto it if you want to live healthier and happier for longer. And then every now and again, if you feel like it, go and have a a, a, a detox, or, you know, full on detox. But do it all the time. Is that the message I'm getting from both of you? Absolutely, yeah, That's absolutely, it. yeah, agreed. And and with you know supplements as well, they can't be seen as a as something to grip hold of at one given time it can't be like oh you know my, i've not looked after my body i'm going to go get a supplement to try and fix it, it, it the, these are called short-term interventions and and, and short-term being the key message there you know you under the current modern pressures of which we live it, it, it is a little bit harder i would argue perhaps in you know years gone by to look after the liver as much as we, well purely and simply because the foods that we eat today often even ones that are packaged as healthy are quite manufactured quite processed and, and therefore you know that there's perhaps a lack of understanding of what really is good you know what we should be putting into our body but yeah as i say there's short-term interventions and then there's consistent lifestyle factors of which we should really take note of and, and, and doing the best for our bodies each and every day look i know you know even i you know i, I enjoy a glass of red wine as well and you know, yes, that holds some health benefits and the antioxidant capacity and so on. But at the end of the day, alcohol is 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 a, is a toxin. It, it 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 and your liver can only filter so much. So look after it because it, yeah. we need it. We really do. <laughs> Jack Jack Jack's put our new slogan on. Look at the middle of the page there. Eat real food, 
protect the NHS, save lives. And, and I think that's the message I've, I've, I've heard loud and clear from you both today is that the, the I loved your analogy uh, earlier on, Hannah, that it's like this big vacuum. Uh, it's like this big filtration system. Just don't overload it. And if you're drinking too much or too much processed food and too much sugar in particular, uh, well, I'm adding this bit, correct me if I'm wrong, but too much fructose where it's got to then, uh, as Poppy said, it's the, that's the manufacturing bit. It can't put that out into the bloodstream. That's why we don't have fructose blood monitors. We only have glucose blood monitors. It converts that in, in, into saturated fat. Um, so it's processed. You know, don't give it too much processing work. Don't give it too much filtration work. You know, try and li lighten the load. And to me, it sounds like the two ways to lighten the load on the liver is to eat real food and just don't drink too much alcohol. That's, uh, that, that's my takeaway. I hope I got that one fairly. Have I, uh, have I summarized it OK? What do you reckon, Hannah? You did. <laughs> I, I totally agree. And Lily. Oh, oh. my God. Lily. Hi, Lily. <laughs> it's funny, Hannah. We've, we've got our cat who doesn't look too dissimilar to Lily actually wandering around here. I did think uh, Jessie might be making an appearance at some point. She tends to like to sort of walk straight over my laptop, over the keyboard whenever I'm doing anything important. Hang on. Really you, 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 your cat's called Jessie. Yours is called Lily. Why have you both named them after my two daughters? <laughs> 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 I don't have a cat, but I've got a daughter called Lily and I've got a daughter called Jessie. There you go. How funny. Oh, great names. <laughs> Who both say. probably love to be, they're both performers, they probably both love to be in cats, but that's a whole <laughs> different thing. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's have a look at uh, what everybody is asking. Um, uh, Danielle, by the way, says, Hannah, you are brilliant. Thank you. Um, uh, Steve says Agreed. to me, Steve Oliver says to me, Steve, you may be in trouble for discussing your wife's bowel movements. She never watches the show. <laughs> Don't worry, Steve. She never watches. She's never read a book I've written or anything. There you go. Uh, Andrew says, alcohol blocks glucagon. That's what I was saying. Yep. Without it, you can't get energy from your fat uh, equal hunger. That's, uh, this makes you want the pizza or fast food on a night out. Exactly. Nicholas says, uh, question for Poppy. What is the focus of learning around the liver when you train to be a nutritional therapist? That's a great question. That's a great question. OK, so nutritional therapy, it, it's the science of nutrition. It's looking at the prevention of, of illness and uh, helping people that are suffering uh, symptomatically. Perhaps they're feeling sluggish. They've got pain. Um, and, and I work quite closely with you know, nutritionists you know, like yourself, Hannah, and, and, you know, who I can then pass on to uh, my clients for then the testing side of things. But it's looking at the problem areas of which a client may come to me with so that it could be anything from internal feelings to something on an external appearance. You know, many people come to me and say my nails are brittle or my, my skin is is dull. And, and there's often something going on. Well, actually, it, it, it is. It's down to what we put into our body. So when it comes to the liver, the bit that I find really, really fascinating is, because what, like I said at the beginning, the liver is a factory and factories do multiple things. They're, they're a storehouse, they, they manufacture, it's a manufacturing hub, and they also uh, process. And what I find fascinating with nutritional therapists is how the, the liver has the ability to convert toxins into something that isn't harmful. Uh, and also the likes of what it can synthesize, you know, so vitamin D is something that we, we talk about a great deal. Vitamin D is, is linked to so many different things. And yes, you know, lots of you will be thinking, well, you know, doesn't the sun help synthesize vitamin D? You're absolutely right, it does. Vitamin D is linked to immune function, it's linked to mood. So when it comes to what I learned with it, with the liver and, and nutritional therapy, it's about what it can convert uh, and, and the way that it actually filters the blood, because you, you've got blood coming in from uh, two systems, delivery systems, if you like. So you've got the hepatic, uh, artery, which is from the heart to the to the liver, and then you've got the uh, the hepatic portal vein, which is the intestine. So, you know, Hannah was talking about the digestive system earlier and, and the importance of that and how, you know, they work hand in hand. Our organs are, are phenomenal. So when it comes to nutritional therapy, nutrition in, in any form, it's understanding what these organs do. As Hannah said, what the hell do they do? You yep. know, we, we eat, we live, we walk around, we get on with our days. But what's actually going on in our body? Why? Do, what is the liver doing? What is the gut well, doing? Well, I'm going to yeah. give you a question from Sheila here, which is I'm, I'm going to be interesting to hear your answer. Uh, 
before you answer. No, I don't, I don't want to point you in any directions, just so we did have Sean Baker on the show. Uh, Sheila Ford says, been on the controversial carnivore diet now for 45 days. I don't go daily. Uh, don't eat veg, hence hardly any ingestible fibre to pass out. Uh, get veg nutri- nutrients from grass-fed meat. Feeling great. What's your view? Uh, well, I'll ask you both. Uh, what's your view on the, 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 the carnivore diet? Uh, that Dr. Baker's been promoting. Go Hannah, you do you want to take this as a, excuse the term, <laughs> stool specialist, I'd argue. I know this is an area that you, you've studied a great deal and you know I've read some of your books as well. So what what, what would your thoughts be? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, did a, I did an article for the Daily Mail on the carnivore diet and it was about the backlash on vegans when the vegan movement came out quite staunchly a couple of years ago. And they had found eight women who all were doing the carnivore diet. Um, and I, I'm a big fan of metabolic typing, which is um, looking at macronutrients and I'm a, a, a fast oxidizer. But I don't think I'd ever be able to eat, eat a diet that was just purely, purely meat. Um, I don't know enough research about the effects of only eating meat. Although if you're a carnivore and you're not eating organic meat, you're going to be creating inflammation and probably end up having, you know, issues with tissue damage, atherosclerosis and things like that potentially. So if you're a carnivore, it's got to be full organic all the way. Um, and if you're not having a bowel movement every day, then that right there tells me that, you know, your body isn't working properly or efficiently. Um, lots of people are different. Not everyone eats breakfast. That's OK. But when it comes to the bowels, you have to move a bowel movement every day because you eat three times a day. Um, so each to their own, you know. If it yeah. works for you, then great. Keep doing it. You know, it's all about it, whether it works for you and being happy. I certainly don't judge anyone's diet. Um, whether yeah. it's healthy or not, I mean, that's a whole rabbit hole of what, what's, who, what's healthy for one isn't healthy for another. Um, I'd be dubious of only eating meat, though. I'll say that. Yeah, I'm going to try it at some stage. I'm, I don't know whether I can last 45 days, but I'm going to certainly try just one week <laughs> just to see how it feels like because... Um, it, you know, Sean Baker, Dr. Sean Baker puts a good case for it, but yeah. I also think with an, the primal hat on, I think man probably went from, you know, maybe a week where it was just me and then because it might be in the middle of the winter, but then in the summer he might have just gone greens for a while or bugs or whatever. Absolutely. So. Um, I think you have Steve, to... just, just to add to that, if you don't mind, so yep. to pick up on, on something that Hannah said there about the organic uh, aspect, of, uh, aspect of it, which is incredibly important. So, you know, everyone, as you said, each to their own. Many people eat certain um, diets due to religious reasons as well or, or, or ethical reasons. And we, you know, in, in the nutrition world, completely respect and understand it and try and work with it as best we can because... Of course, we'll, we'll have clients and family members and friends even that you would like to help that, that have their own reasonings for eating a certain diet, whether they have problems or not. But to touch on the organic side of things, you know, it's been said before and we'll say it again. You can have a, an, an unhealthy uh, vegetarian and a healthy vegetarian, just as you can have an unhealthy meat eater or a healthy meat eater. And um, there's more to it. Uh, and, and the organic side of it is so incredibly important. You know, you could eat non-organic just full vegetable diet but still you know you, you're ingesting certain chemicals and pesticides and, and fertilizers and so on and, and the same goes for you know antibiotic fed cattle and then you you then ingest that meat so i think one of the most important takeaways from this you know regardless of, of what your your choices are if you're a meat eater or you know a vegan or vegetarian it's about real food real food eat organic wherever you possibly can uh, and, and look, you know, <clears throat> same as you, Hannah, arguably I perhaps couldn't be able to do just a full meat diet myself because it, I don't believe it would suit me. Um, but as, again, each to their own. And you, you come to learn from your body's responses what's working and what's not. So, you know, bowel movements for one, feelings of energy. And then you can start to look further into am I getting enough 
you know, of, of whatever it may be, you know, the, yep. the, the polyphenols, the antioxidants, the, the, the fiber from the vegetables. So yeah, you can start to look into it deeper, but the main takeaway always, I believe, it, it, it's real food and organic wherever possible. Agree, just in agreement with that completely. Brilliant. Now I'm yeah. going to apologize to everybody that I'm going to have to skip some questions because I have to finish the, sh finish the show very, very shortly uh, because I've got a day job I've got to do today. And a busy old day, Steve. It's going to be you? so strange to go back to a normal day job today. Uh, let's, let's pick some questions out. Steve, oh, here's an interesting one. I'd love to get your feedback on this. Uh, and I love Zoe Harkham, but Steve has listened to something that Zoe said recently. Zoe did a uh, Zoe Harkham, who's absolutely brilliant, has done a speech recently uh, uh, and a talk that, that fibre is not an essential nutrient. I've got an opinion on that, and I do love Zoe Harkham. What's your opinion on Zoe saying that her research suggests that fibre isn't essential? Um, so, she, so she's saying that the vegetables aren't needed in the diet she said no, she wasn't saying that she did a speech at the public health collaboration uh, last may uh, i was actually at that one uh, where she did a whole research because obviously the world health organization say that you know if you can eat 35 grams of fiber a day your chance of cancer drops your chances of heart disease drops mm -hmm. all, all mortality drops uh, and zoe came out uh, just some research uh, she wasn't putting an opinion one way or the other that said you know do the, 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 she, in some research, is it pointed that fiber wasn't an essential part of the diet? I mean, to me, I'll tell you where I stand on it. I mean, I, I, Zoe is brilliant. She is absolutely brilliant. M my understanding about the gut microbiome is the good bacteria like it uh, and all the research I've seen, and therefore fiber makes sense to be part of the diet. Um, I would, yeah, I'd, it, it, in, in terms of when you look at the likes of prebiotics and probiotics, you know, fiber acting as a, pr a prebiotic, so the food uh, for the, um, the probiotics, it, it, would, it would suggest that it, it is a necessity. Now, arguably, some people may need less fiber than others. And then again, that comes down to genetics and, and epigenetics again. But it, it, it's, it has a, an important role in, in bowel movement. It has an important movement in, in the digestive tract. And uh, it, uh, what I would say, though, is you can, all, you can pay a lot of attention to where you get your fibre from. So, you know, cereal companies will, will say, you know, that how fibrous their, their, their cereal is when actually you, you could have something that's fibrous, like a vegetable, for example, uh, that doesn't have all the sugars. So yeah. I, I'd say, in, in my personal opinion, uh, the source is very important, maybe different how much somebody needs compared to another person, but I, I believe fibre to be very important. Yeah. Great, brilliant, fantastic. Um, I certainly believe in it. I take a, a fibre supplement every day because because uh, I'm a nomad. Um, I can have days where I have no fibre coming in through the food, so uh, I will supplement uh, with inulin or glucomannan or, or, or something yeah. like that. Just for someone um, that might not know, Steve, what's a nomad? Uh, one meal a day. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat one meal a day and have done for three or four years now, other than on holiday or, or and things like that. Um, ladies. Fantastic. Thank you both for being with us. It was a Been really a interesting talk. I'm going to miss these chats as of next week. Um, but I'd, I'd, love to do a, I'd love to do a podcast with you at some, time, at some stage in the future, Hannah. Um, Absolutely. I'd love it's already been discussed, Hannah, hasn't Has it? it? We, we're on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We don't miss an opportunity like that. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, God bless you both. Have a fantastic day. Thank you to everybody for uh, your questions today. Sorry I couldn't get round to all of them. Uh, but for some reason, I've been asked to go and do some day work, like the you know, thing I'm paid to do. Um, so uh, we'll have to cut it short there. But thank you, uh, Hannah and Poppy, for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks very Take much, care. Poppy. Thanks have a lovely day, everyone. Yeah, and you, Hannah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, weren't they fantastic? I learnt loads today. I, I can always tell when I've learnt a lot. The amount of notes I write down. Um, so thank you very much to Hannah and Poppy. Thank you for being with us. Keep those donations going. Uh, if you liked the show, just give it the thumbs up if you wouldn't mind down at the bottom. Uh, if you really liked it, how about sharing it with your friends by hitting the share button. Uh, and if you could subscribe, uh, because uh, in addition to these daily shows, when these stop next week, we still put up a podcast, the Fat and Furious podcast, with some brilliant guests. Uh, we put up one every single week. Uh, and our team also uh, put up new recipe ideas, two or three uh, every week as well. Uh, so if you can, set the notification. If you can, subscribe, share, thumbs up, all those things. And comment below after the show. That would be great. Till tomorrow, 
stay safe and uh, look after that liver. When you have to go without so everyday things, food, hot water, heating, that's really, you know, it's a really hard way to have to, have to live really. And that's devastating for most people. start to make a lot of mistakes at work and they suggest that I see a doctor who diagnosed me with at that time work-related stress. I unfortunately uh, took two TIA strokes. I did spend a time in hospital to come out to discover that I couldn't go back to my work. Worked all my life, army, sales, when uh, my health deteriorated with a heart condition. Then my married life deteriorated as well. After a period of time they decided it wouldn't be viable for me to return to that kind of work because I, I couldn't handle the pressure of it so it led me into the benefit system. We just struggled, started to struggle. Things started to get quite sort of dramatic and you know things were just starting to get on top of me because I just wasn't doing what I should have been doing as a mother. I do have a um, 10 year old daughter as well so I do try and provide for her as well which makes it more difficult but it's a case of trying to budget or having to go without. I think if the food bank had not been there to keep me going, I don't think I'll be here today. No, I'm not needing the food bank anymore, but I'm glad it was there when I needed the help. To find out that there is places there that can help you with food and other things, it's, it's an amazing thing to, to have put in front of you.